welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Brown. We are joined this week by our guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, it's uh, Rick Tom Murray Prince from uh, Trading Card Game Pit. Oh, I had no idea your name was Rick. Yeah. Yeah. We get to find out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> On yeah, Master Tonberry. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, before we get started, we want to thank our sponsor, Cards of Uh Check them out for any type of cards, um, sleeves, or foilies, because they just bought Max's collection. Uh, you can have what I didn't take. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then, as a backup, if Cards of Evilies can't have it first, then you can uh, go to this man's site over here. He's got lots of product, if you want to talk about that real quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much carry everything uh, from all the opuses. Uh, you know, I have singles pretty much uh, loaded for all of them. Not that they're necessarily available on the site, but um, <laughs> yeah. they are uh, going to be up uh, shortly. I've been saying that for some time, but that's actually happening um, for Opus 8. And uh, yeah, so lots of stuff going on. Uh, we also sell Card Gamer Magazine, which is, you know, the one that gets you those nice hot spoilers um before right, you get right. to see them anywhere else so yeah. oh, that's sweet yeah no i've heard i, see, I've heard good I see wafu in the background yeah right <laughs> <laughs> he's got the, the one on display so yeah so tell us a little about yourself kind of how you got started with the game where you play etc uh so yeah i'm from new york obviously uh yeah, the city right yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm actually on Long Island. Uh, I work in the okay. city, so conveniently, I uh, host a weekly event at Monastery Comics uh, in the city. Uh, I also regularly play at the Uncommons, which uh, just hosted the uh, Petite Cup. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm fairly familiar with both stores. Uh, I've hosted some events on the islands as well. I've been playing since Opus 1. Uh, okay. I opened this door in the beginning of opus three so we've been oh, okay, around nice. yeah sweet uh, so what do you so you mentioned you work with stores uh organize events and you have a site uh mm -hmm. is, is there anything else you do for the community or is that kind of your main role you've kind of found yourself in uh yeah i mean that's pretty much the big thing uh you know i i try to rope in as many players as i can mm -hmm. uh you know i've done things like going to Final Fantasy concerts and handing out flyers for the game, just trying to get people, you know, interested in the Final Fantasy training card game, which seems to be still, for whatever reason, something Final Fantasy fans don't seem to necessarily <laughs> know about. Um, yeah. So, you know, a lot of the, the marketing side of things and just really trying to get the word out and wanting the game to be as big as I think it should be. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Hey, now, do you still send out uh, chapters cards? I do. Uh, I send out chapters cards with uh, all of my orders. That's sort of like a surprise thing that I do for um, my customers. Um, it does. I still, sort of, have, I still have all mine for my orders from you. Yeah, it, it does sort of depend on order size. You know, I'm I'm, I'm not really gonna send out like four or five of them with like a dollar order, but you know, I'm I I am pretty generous. How how much would like it take to, to get a couple Gilgameshes? with an order uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know a lot of times if, if you just ask that that's pretty much gotcha. all, it takes, all right all so. right i'll keep that in mind <laughs> big yoga mesh fan over here so yeah. uh you, you started to touch on a little bit uh you have a relation to the uncommons uh they just hosted the petite cup this past weekend on saturday i believe it was uh, uh yeah yeah what what's your nature of kind of the relationship with the store uh beyond just being a customer and like a player um, well, I mean, that's pre pretty much my relationship with the store is, is that, um, you know, I, I know John really well, who's the tournament organizer over there. Um, you know, we talked to the owner or just about, the organizer, like a TO. He, so. he is just the tournament organizer. He does also work for the store. Um, okay. but you know, he, he's not the manager of the store. He's not the owner of the store. Um, he doesn't make, um, the big decisions, so to mm -hmm. speak. Um, he does just work there, but, um, you know, he's the guy who's been sort of the passion behind growing out the scene in New York besides, right, right. um, myself. And then obviously, um, I like to give a shout out to, uh, Brian Camacho from level one onion night, who, you know, does a lot for, for our community in New York as well. Definitely see that name around a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. So, uh, before we get into that event a little more, I, I wanted to ask you, what, what are your kind of like favorite archetypes to play or kind of strategies to play in the game? So I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a weirdo uh, in that <laughs> I like 
I like to overthink everything that I do. Um, so my favorite archetypes are usually multicolor in nature. Um, my favorite is uh, Warriors of Light right now. Okay. Uh, I do, do like to play it with three or four colors, um, sometimes even five. Uh, Been there. I've gotten, <laughs> gotten, gotten played very it, Played it with more. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> gotten, gotten very comfortable with the uh, five color version of that deck. And then uh, sort of from there, got uh, involved with monsters, who uh, obviously are a uh, love of mine. Uh, so uh, having Tonberries in my deck is always... Uh, I was going to say, nice are, you, are you capable of playing a monsters deck without at least one copy of Tonberries in it, even if there's no other water cards? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, always, there's always at least one, uh, even if it's the, the newer one that uh, stacks your, uh, your searchers. Mm -hmm. I, I actually find that to be sort of Goblin. fun in a in a janky no one knows it's coming kind of way gotcha gotcha uh no i think he's talking about uh the one cp one right the tonberry yeah the, the the one cp tonberry it was good against scions for sure oh geez <laughs> nice Palmo. Yeah. yeah the card's very yeah. interesting especially uh, actually in the meta right now with all the lightning the sid previa decks we'll talk about that another time mm -hmm. anyway <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, all right, we'll, we'll move right into it then. Kind of the hot topic of the weekend, and um, I have a feeling the week to come, uh, the Petit Cup. From sure, your sure, perspective, yeah. how was the event overall before we talk about specifics? Um, so overall, uh, I want to say from the, the player base and, and the games and, you know, what everybody was jamming out, everybody had a very good time. Um, was it necessarily the most comfortable uh, would be a completely separate question. But in terms of the overall success of the event, I mean, we ran like maybe 20 minutes long. Um, there was a couple of hiccups, you know, in terms of uh, rounds being paired and some judging issues, but nothing that really put a sour note on the event. Um, Did you say 20 least... minutes over is in for like the whole event? Yeah. Oh, that's actually um, kind of impressive. That's not a lot of time over. <laughs> again, yeah, to no, it, so we, we were running pretty much on time. Um, you know, I, nobody seemed to really have any issues with players or, you know, any real complaints about games or judging issues or anything really like that. Um, everybody seemed to have a really good time. Okay, so you touched on it briefly there, uh, play space. So I understand yeah. that this place is like a coffee shop or something, people were saying? Or... Yes. So um, if you're familiar with New York City at all, there's the Lower East Side, which is sort of famous for like its tattoo parlors and like smaller coffee shops and cute sort of like mm -hmm. college-y sort of spots, right? Yeah. So this is basically what you would expect from that kind of description it's a very okay. cute cozy definitely have my image yeah. <laughs> um you know there's small tables strewn all about um you know the tables are really built for you know like a couple to sit across from each other maybe play like checkers or one of their like two to three hundred board games that they do have that you can choose from which is great um but you know maybe not the best space for a large scale um, organized uh, sort of event because there's really no place for people to stand. Um, <laughs> also, I guess the tables weren't big enough for play mats or something I saw. Uh, um, yeah, uh, so your tables um, at times can be a little short. So you're playing on, if you have a full size play mat, kind of like half of a play mat because there's they're slightly over capacity which is what i would say um you know your your mats are kind of folding over each other as well mm -hmm. so you, you're getting you're getting to know your fellow player which <laughs> you know i mean i'm used to it i, I play in that store pretty frequently so mm -hmm. i'm i guess i hate to say i i know what to expect going in there um you know just make sure you wear your deodorant that day and um <laughs> you're you're, you're going to be Every fine day. and yeah, and it, it did seem like, uh, you know, everybody was pretty okay. There wasn't really much, you know, complaining in terms of like, oh, I need to get out of here or people freaking out. Definitely, like, crammed. It was tight. So there were a lot of complaints. I want to talk about the biggest issue for me is customer uh, service. Um, yeah. Is it true that 
there were players who came together um, in like carpools, but some of them would have to leave the event during the top eight to literally leave the store. They couldn't watch their friends, couldn't even stay in the store. They had to leave the store, even though they paid for the entry to the event. Right. So there's a large number of customer service issues um, I would address kind of throughout the day, not just the one. Um, largely, there was just a lot of rudeness on, on the part of the staff. Um, you know, I, I hate to say that they immediately seemed as if they were overwhelmed, but I don't think they were ready <laughs> really for the amount of people um, that they received, um, for one. Two, logistically, I don't necessarily think they had us set up or laid out correctly within the store. Sort of we're jamming up the store as much as possible rather than getting out of the way of people. So there was clearly a lot of frustration building from the staff, um, not being able to properly service their normal customers, which they were trying to maintain during the event, um, right, right. which, you know, maybe wasn't necessarily the greatest idea either, um, which inevitably turned into them uh, pretty much exploding um, at the entirety of the group right before top eight cut, um, pretty much telling us to get the F out um, with that emphasis and said words. Um, so they actually said, they actually said fuck. Uh, yeah, well, it was just the F part, um, but it oh, was they actually just said F. The, it, yeah, you need to get the F out. Um, <laughs> wow. if you, if you're, you're, if you're so name, mad that you want to say it, but you don't actually say it. That's actually hilarious. Well, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It, it, but... it turned into if your name was not called, right? That's um, what I saw. You, 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 you need to leave immediately. Now, okay, just to clarify and... real quick. And that was, to be fair, uh, I was cut off mid-sentence, sort of asking people like, hey, if you have nowhere to go right now, uh, we have a separate venue set up where you can hang out, jam out a bunch of games, and we'll be having a separate tournament. Um, they didn't care. <laughs> um, cut, cut, cut me off uh, mid-sentence, just said, get, get the F out. You know, your name wasn't called. And that, was, that was pretty much it. Then everybody dispersed. Now, just a quick clarification. When you say the employees, are you talking just at the store or were there people that were working only just the event, like judges or anything? Like, where was the frustration or was it, like, everybody? Like, what, can you specify a little bit? So, so there was, so the frustration was, yeah, the frustration was definitely with um, management and the people who were working the store, not okay. the TO or... Um, Brian, who was helping um, okay. the TO. Um, so th they were certainly not frustrated. Um, John knows what he's in for. He's run events. He's also been to events before. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Um, it's not like he's uh, a newbie or anything like that in terms of the event. Uh, so he wasn't stressed, but the manager on duty uh for the store gotcha. was uh very very stressed um with the people and people standing and being in the way um a thing i would point out is ordering food wasn't necessarily a pleasant experience because you just <laughs> had it shouted out and you kind of had to right, run right. up to the counter as quickly as possible and then so they, they handed your food so they serve food there and where do you eat so yeah, at the same tables that you play at <laughs> Oof. So, so the table is, can't yeah, fit a full is. flay mat, and they also still serve food. So, uh, yeah, right. that's something. Uh, like it's okay. Out of to um, gears, <laughs> moving. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like, it's okay to have kind gears of a dual purpose place. place, but I feel like if you know you can't accommodate it, then don't accept the responsibility. Is kind of one thought I've had. I don't... Okay, so so. Square Enix had have they ever visited the store in person? Is this where the Petite Cup was last year? Uh so no, this this was not where the Petite Cup was last time. Uh last time the Petite Cup was at a cafe in Chinatown called Silk Road, which was actually where we had the sister event. Um Okay. Petite Cup this time. 
I feel like I saw people saying that it was the same place or something, which must have been false. They did not have um, the Petit Cup last time at Uncommons. That was at Look Road, which Look Road is you know, a weird venue in and of itself. Um, okay, so but um, a score, so an scoring uh, employee, um, you know, not not RB, but not anyone else either, had never been to that store before. Uh, RB had been to uh, the Silk Road. Um, I know he was at the Uncommons um, to play some games. Last time he went to Comic Con, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he also stopped by and visited Monesty as well. So he's very familiar with the venues. So I mean, he knows he knows the spot is small. Okay, so so were there so there's been some uh, confusing information. Was there another store in the area that supports FFTCG that could have ran the event? Yes. So the other store in the area, I run the weekly events at on Thursday so nights. You're, you're the TO there, Monday basically. Nights. Yes. Okay. Um, that's that's Monesty Comics. Okay. They're um, a midtown Manhattan location, so it's about 20 minutes away. Um, you know, but uh, they are not generally interested in running larger scale events they really only want the casual play on thursday okay. so it's kind of hard so, to interesting convince them to do stuff okay so there wasn't actually an option for square enix because um, i mean i i can't say no because maybe but i don't know that they asked and it's possible that even if they did they said no but they're communication with us as players in their venue has been very poor the the stores communication monacy comics yeah okay fair enough right because i was to say i don't think square enix owes us anything as far as telling us who the oh, communicator yeah, no. but yeah no. oh no no gotcha yeah. no i feel the same way there are a lot of things that happen um at our local store cool stuff that happen behind the scenes and they don't really tell us um that kind of stuff so i i, I feel you there um, it's just, it, obviously it's very frustrating. So the, the customer service being like a huge deal, you know, we, we saw the cap rise. Do we know, do you think that the event would have been much better or do you think that the, the small increase in cap wasn't that big of a deal breaker? Um, so I'll, I'll say two things about it. Um, one, I don't necessarily think eight more people was a game changer for them been pretty as equally overwhelmed with 32 versus 40 <laughs> it was largely i think more where they had us sitting um how they had us moving around um you know it just wasn't necessarily the smartest use of their space sure. caused i think a lot of headaches particularly in between rounds when you would stand in a corner for three minutes, not able to move because you had to wait for four other people to see where they were on their pairings list to get out of the way, to sit down so you could move. Um, yeah, not the smartest use of their space. Um, the opening of the cap, I think, was more John... Uh, being optimistic about the ability to sort of cope with having that much of space in use and him wanting to satisfy his local player base, um, which was largely shut out of the event um, because it sold out uh, very quickly. Okay. And that brings me to another thing that I, I that concerns me. I do think that Petite Cups specifically should have pre-registration for locals um and that locals should be able to fill those events first i think that should be the same for every region um yeah, yeah you know it would it would be it stinks that like uh, i'm just trying to think of a good comparison you know like i i know for example that if you know the store owner they're they're able to register early there's no reason that that shouldn't be across the board. If, if you are a local at a store, you know, opening it up a week earlier seems like a good play. Um, um, yeah. Especially for so an event would... with like a cap of like 30 and 40. Now, like if it's 150 people or something, then sure, you might not need to do that. But Oh, I would even do it for then just in case. But just so that if someone didn't get in and then they capped. So let's say the Tampa Crystal Cup coming up, right? 
Oh, RV, RV APT Cup's even better because they, they did pre-registration. But they're better because they have a much larger scene than New York did, right? So if someone tries to enter the Petit Cup in RVA and Battlegrounds is like, I'm sorry, we're sold out. There's not really an excuse because they've had all this time to pre-register. I mean, great, they have a lot more people, but I'm saying that like, you know, Adam Lane, for example, has done a heck of a job making sure that that everyone who has a chance to pre-register can. For example, I'm pre-registered. I haven't registered. But, you know, I've already made plans. I'm heading up there. I've, I'm already set. I know that I'm going to be able to enter the event. That should have happened for New York. I think that the locals should have been able to pre-register. They should have been given a preference um, to make that happen. And mm-hmm. I hope that moving forward, you know, that's not a Square Enix thing. That's a that's really a venue thing that venues need to work out ahead of time with the player base. Certainly the players can help out, you know, in organizing and, and orchestrating this to make sure that it happens. But absolutely, like, players need to pre- be able to pre-register for local events. Um, mm-hmm. Let's talk about specifically how the event went. I, you know, like, yeah. like as far as top eight goes, um, who, who were the top eight? What were the decks were they playing? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so uh, a lot of top eight was... Um kind of what you would expect in terms of uh, the water control decks with your Fasoya. Um, I did see quite a bit of that. Um, you know, a lot of your Diabolos uh, wind decks. Uh, Do you want me to go through the list real quick? Most... I have the list of archetypes here. Um, oh, sure. Go, go, go so, ahead. So there, it looks like there were two mono yeah. ice, and this is in no particular order. There were uh, two mono mm-hmm. ice, the wind water standard units. Uh, so I guess it was mm-hmm. without um, the Yuri Chalinka package or something. Uh, mono uh-huh, water. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that's the Fusoya deck you were referring to. Uh, yep. Earth water mm-hmm. princes, which is interesting. Uh, which fire which wind... was very interesting. Yeah, we can maybe talk about that a little bit. Um, fire wind ping was a uh, uh, mm-hmm. princes or unblockable. So I guess maybe there was kind of a dual kind of mode there. Uh, wind water Yuri ex burst, which sounds like the normal kind of run of the mill, mostly wind splash or water deck, and then scions uh, to round it out. Yeah, yep. basically what you expect minus the, the Princes. Now, was the Princes deck like uh, Noctis, Prejudice, and like even Razzler, or did not have Razzler? Um, I don't, I don't remember seeing Razzler. Um, but uh, to be fair, that it was a was not a very long game for me. <laughs> <laughs> what were you piloting? Um, so I was uh I was playing uh, Warriors of Light. The okay, deck right, right. I've yeah. Been playing. Or, or toying toying around with for for I'd say since Opus I want to say four uh, I sort of was started playing with that Opus two Warrior of Light and mm-hmm. making him sort of a favorite of mine. So it's Opus five it's obviously become more viable. So what <laughs> what was this legendary play I was seeing talk of with someone blowing out your Warrior of Light or something? Uh, so I, I didn't necessarily foresee the dangers of removing Delita. Um, and I attempted to remove his Delita uh, with a Warrior of Light special. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Boy. Boy, did that end poorly. Um, did, was it a, was by... it a better end? <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah it, it, it was i couldn't help um, it. <laughs> i i called it my ptsd moment of the uh my ptsd moment of the tournament uh because that references power at the uh, yeah play. that's yeah that's that's a tough one yeah the uh the thing that was explained mostly to me with the deck is that the summons really need to come at the right time and if uh, you're off at all um, when they hit, uh, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. Um, but Dan is um, a really great pilot, um, Dan Casillas. Uh, you know, I've played him a, a number of times, and I feel like every time I play him, I, I learn something new. And, you know, I so, learned to watch out for Delita, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what princes are there? Do you have, like, Scott oh, and Gordon as well, or no? Um, I, I think he had Gordon. I know Noctis is really his big, um, sort of game winning, uh, piece. Cause I've not seen really a lot of decks that utilize that as sort of smartly or interestingly. Um, how does he, how does he utilize Gordon? I actually wonder. 
Um, to be fair, I I did not even see him play it in our game. So. I mean, I think okay. Gordon's mainly used to ch like block twice safely, right? Mm hmm. Because you get to block, you know, tap or activate, and then you reactivate him with the backup that activates a prince block again. Yeah, he's a he's a defensive play. Um, you know, I. I but there is Scott that gives him brave. Ball. Sure. So you can attack and. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was um, mostly the the forwards were were earth focused. Delita was a large, large part of the focus for him because it was just it was just impossible to deal with. And then he put you on a he was putting it was more like you were pressured into a clock of I have to do something about this Delita because um, he's big because um, you're looking at Ovelia on the board, you know, uh, making him larger um, as well. Are you talking so, about uh, F Opus? Four the backup or... Opus Three Legend Delita, I think he's talking about. Yeah, the one that makes um, you the, take damage when on you, targeting and all that. Yeah, when oh. you target him, it it breaks your whatever targets. That's what he's talking um, about, the Warrior of Light. So he targeted with the bitter gotcha. end and it died. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So he's he, it was sort of a he's baiting you into attacking or removing the Delita because it's putting you on this you know timer, um, so to speak. Sure. Um, <laughs> and if you do. Uh, you're gonna pay for it. Uh, usually with with your board disappearing. <laughs> so does he have like uh, Titan and stuff to kind of fight and two for one? Um, on I, I, you know, I didn't see him playing Titan. It was more the the water summons. Um, sure, sure. That, that that he was utilizing um, for the removal. It's interesting because if you graviton only triggers off Earth summons. I mean, we'll see the we'll see the list. Uh, you said uh, John was posting him soon. Yeah, they're gonna get posted up tonight. Yeah, so after his uh, after the locals, which again, I I'm not sure who's who's going or if anyone's going. So, so yeah, we'll see that later. And then you said uh, so first place is the wind water standard unit. So that's just kind of a regular what knight ranger things get big, hard to deal with kind of deck, right? Uh, yeah. Um, Philip's been uh, piloting that uh, deck for for a while. Um. And it was something, you know, we, we sort of expected to see um, just because he's pretty confident with that. Right. Um, I remember there's a buddy of ours in Kansas who's the same way, who he kind of always shows up with some kind of standard unit build when we're there. <laughs> yeah, kind of nice I, I think, it's coming, it, but. you know, it's, you know, he he's piloted that so well for so long, it, you know, sort of suited him to go in there. He's won many of our uh locals sort of back to back so he's probably one of our one of our top guys here so it wasn't really that much of a surprise to see him walk away what so uh, you said bottle water ended up winning is that what won no wind water standard units won oh when, oh yeah wind water standard units okay yeah yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then somewhere in there were two mono ice that may have been like the jumbo ice with like sephiroth and orphans and stuff or maybe one was like the turbo we list there going around it's kind of both yeah. varieties yeah we saw we saw a couple of the the Sephiroth lists, um, which were which were fun. Um, we definitely got to see that special go off a couple of times throughout <laughs> the day, which is which is always cool to see. So, not for the opponent. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. It's not usually the <laughs> cool. Isn't usually the word I hear describe what happens when that special goes off. But <laughs> so, was there an issue with the top eight slips or something, or what happened there? Just try to clarify on that. Oh, so I I, I heard that the the wrong top eight was. Called. So there, there are two sort of hiccups throughout the tournament. I know um, during the uh, first round there was a repairing during the second round, and that was um, largely due to a lot of people either m missed filling out their slip or um, you know we had someone who brought up the potential suspicion that someone had you know filled it out incorrectly on purpose, which. I won't get into that's neither here nor there. We, nobody can say what actually happened in that case, you know, but obviously you take that seriously. So you go through all the slips and you repair, sure. um, which is, which is what they did. Um, so I sort of, you know, my hat goes off for them handling that in that fashion. Then, uh, yeah, during top eight, they had, a uh, sort of a, a misread on how top cut was supposed to pair out. And, uh, Started announcing the wrong names, fixed it, and sort of did a re-announcement, which, you know... It's like the Miss never, America thing all over never, again. <laughs> never, yeah, you know, it's never never fun when it happens, you know. Um, 
you know, obviously he apologized sort of right after it happened. Um, I know sure. from the personal <clears throat> side, he was on like four hours, of, four hours of sleep. Not that that's an excuse, but, um, you know, it's like, you know, things happen. So there was that little hiccup. But beyond that, um, that was maybe, you know, like 15 minutes of waiting to have that reannounced. And, yeah, and like I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm still impressed even with those hiccups, with the repairs, with people, whatever the you know, customer service stuff that's happening that was still only 20 minutes over what the kind of allotted time was. That means they either really knew what the timing was or they way overshot. Cause a lot of events I see, they'll like either be like done early. Cause they, it's just a, you know, nothing happens. But if anything ever happens where there's a repair, like nationals last year, like stuff gets delayed <laughs> sometimes at these events yeah. with the software. Yeah. So it's impressive. Now, have you heard any kind of blowback from the locals uh, because of what happened at the event? Or... Um, yeah, yeah, and no. I mean, I think a lot of the locals sort of knew, again, the Uncommons is this small, quaint little shop that were sort of coming in and overwhelming for the day. Right. Um, we looked at it sort of that way. Um, and I think people who came from out of town looked at it like this was supposed to be an event, <laughs> um, uh, you know, which is completely fair, you know. Um, you know, I, I do sort of feel bad that, you know, for anybody who came out and feels like they didn't get what they expected out of it. Um, right. Any, anyone who flew out people, or drove all the way from the RVA. Yeah, you know, I, I know even the people who sort of drove out at least got good games in and had fun in that sense. And it was good to see everybody. So, you know despite the minor hiccups of a small venue and, you know, having to be buddy, buddy with everybody, I, I don't think it was a bad event. Yeah. I just, you know, so going, going forward, are you, are you going to go out to any other petite cups? Are you going to uh, any crystal cups? Like what are you, what are your plans competitively? Um, so I intend to probably travel to um, some of the cups. I'm not exactly sure what I'll be able to make um, because of work. Um, I'm a travel agent, so, you know, figuring out those kinds of things is sort of easy for me. Um, I like, <laughs> hope um, so. <laughs> uh, to, to jam out in or, you know, like uh, a flight to cash last minute, I can usually sort of pull that stuff together. But yeah, uh, uh, this year has sort of been the year of I'd like to get out there and, you know, just meet a lot of the guys I've sort of had a lot of these kind of talks with, you know, yeah. um, you, you guys, uh, <laughs> you know, getting out to Florida would have been a, a great thing for me this year. And I kind of missed out there. Um, yeah. The reunion event was insane. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'd like to do that. Um, I do have a major event planned uh, for my store uh, coming up this June, um, which will actually coincide with, KupoCon, which is a <laughs> all Final Fantasy based um, convention, um, they're gonna have a masquerade ball. Wait, um, wait, wait! Masquerade ball? Does everyone have to dress as Moogles? Uh, uh, not as Moogles, but uh, as Final Fantasy characters, um, and people go all out, all out. Um, it's a really cool. Someone event. used to come as Poo Poo, just like one of those like body yeah. suits and like a little antenna, <laughs> just like, like yeah, black yeah. sharpie well, eyes. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a store mascot in one of those. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, so we're doing that. Um, we'll be running the gaming side of that. Uh, I've already sort of opened talks with Square to see if we could get that turned into a potential qualifier for Worlds, which would be something that's really cool. But, uh, you know, sort of waiting to hear back on, on that from them. Don't want to say anything is concrete obviously because right, right. that's on, on them Understandable. Um, right also but, uh, the, aren't their world slots already uh allocated or am i crazy uh not for not for qualifiers um they've not uh so do you mean for that. nationals then uh yeah yeah oh okay okay, okay. that's okay. that's yeah, where the <laughs> okay sorry sorry yeah. for like an lq then like a local qualifier yeah. Yeah, yeah right oh yeah right. that should definitely that should definitely happen oh, that'd be great yeah yeah, so we'll have that in uh, in Newark. It'll be right with KupoCon, so it'll be a nice little combination of events. Um, Sorry, that just sounds amazing, KupoCon. <laughs> so every time you say it, I'm like, oh. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, I, I plan on, you know, if I can make it out to Nationals this year and, and say hi to everybody, that would be uh, that would be pretty great. Well, you're just going to qualify for Nationals, and you go and see everybody, right? Yeah, well, that's that's always, <laughs> that's always the hope, right? <laughs> well, hopefully. I mean, there... 
you have two stores there, right? Do you imagine that they'll both yeah. be qualifiers? I do. Um, I usually end up judging one of them. Uh, so we'll have to see, uh, you know, how that pans out this year. Um, if Monesty will even want to do one this year is sort of an up in the air kind of thing. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll see. Interesting. Yeah. So do you have any um, quick suggestions for uh, Square Enix um, in the future as far as concerning New York events? I mean, because obviously oh. you want to have them, but even if you like, for example, there's no way you could ever have a Crystal Cup unless it was held in like a ballroom. And we know New York's very expensive. Um, right. So what, what would your suggestions be? Um, well, I, I mean, I think they just need to foster a better relationship or better communication with a store there um, or a contact within the store. I mean, it, it does feel sort of silly to me that, you know, I run a store, I, I do a lot of uh, business for them, work for them. Um, and the communication feels, feels so disjointed. Um, you know, I'd love to be able to talk to the people at Monesty and say, hey, can I host an event at your store on this Saturday and have that be a somewhat agreeable conversation? Um, but what I'm finding is a lot of the conversations turn into, you know, what are you offering the store? How many people are coming in? And uh, is this game more popular than the game I'm already running? So well, it might be you if know, you run the event. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think the dice rolling yeah. um, happens a lot less in New York City because of, you know, right. the risk involved with that, rent and right. whatever that may be. Now, did you say the store you TO for, you work at or judge at, whatever your role mm -hmm. ends up being for a particular night, is that mm -hmm. bigger than the Uncommons? Or like, what's the, kind of the capacity yeah. of that store? It's it's much larger. Um, you know, we did the um, last national qualifier at that store. Um, we also had... Um, How many people uh, attended that? I think there was 47. Okay, so um, it can hold a bigger crowd. I was going to say, like, would there be a store that Square talking, like, speaking to r result in large events like Crystal Cups yeah. and things like that? So that, that's what I was going to ask in, in better words. Yeah, I, but... I, 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 I think they could easily talk to Monacy and, and, and get a better working relationship there, but I think the conversation... But, e but e even if that were to happen, they they couldn't hold Crystal Cup numbers, though, right? What's Crystal Cup numbers for New York, you know? Um, That's you know, fair, If we're looking right? at 50, 60 people, they could probably do that. It would be okay. it would be tight, but they could, they could probably manage that. Um, I find that, you know, most events in New York draw around 50 people and that's that's just what you're going to see right now right um, okay that's fair you know although I, crystal cups to be fair will pull in people from other states and like surrounding areas who want to qualify who don't have one that's closer like say you live in pennsylvania new jersey new hampshire vermont like those areas sure. i'm sure they would travel to the new york crystal cup if they want to qualify i mean i don't know that there's a single player in vermont i mean well i mean i'm just saying the surrounding states if you know, yeah. if they want the closest opportunity to qualify i guess maybe toronto might be closer yeah, depending on I was going to say you, you have the Toronto Cup, which is, you know, even for me is is a 35 minute plane ride. So it's not, you know, uh, really that far of a trip. If I wanted to go go and plan that. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I just have to have my passport. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a travel agent. Yeah, yeah, that's all set. I really just wanted to know what they could do. And I think Rick answered it pretty good with, you know, uh, fostering a better communication network. Mm hmm. Um, which is difficult to do if you're Square Enix. And that's because really Square Enix, as we know, is in North America RB. Right. So yeah. that's, you know, everything that RB says has to, you know, go through approval process. They, they can't just say whatever they want. You know, they have to go through official means. Um, yeah. And then what ends up happening is, you know, you look at Square Enix and it's this ginormous company that, that, that produces, you know, the best RPGs in the entire world, arguably. And so you just imagine that Square Enix, you know, part of the, the, the TCG has just this, this staff behind it, yeah. rallying behind it. When as far as in North America, it's really just RB working their ass off. Um, and so 
in my opinion, that's where you have to kind of decide, uh, you know, distinguish between RB and Square Enix. I think that RB is doing a really good job and that Square Enix is dropping the ball. Yeah. Oh, Just- yeah. Um, <laughs> from a from a business standpoint, you know, I I, I I think I blew them up a couple of weeks ago about the uh, Final Fantasy XIV, um, you know, sure, yeah. right. not having like, some kind of promo so new expansion. They're throwing, yep. they're, they're throwing a playing card pack into the uh, collector's edition, and it's like, okay, so you guys can throw 50 pieces of cardboard into this box, but you can't, can't throw one that's advertising the TCG. I, I mean, I'm not... A lot of people were like, well, why are you arguing for a promo? Why are you going to drive up the value of the box? I'm, I'm, I wasn't Missing even the point. arguing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I mean, the, the real argument is, hey, guys, you have an opportunity here to hit the largest active player base of Final Fantasy currently, period, in the yeah. world. And say, I mean, hey, we've got a card game now. Look at it from this perspective. I feel like they did nothing. I have never considered playing Final Fantasy XIV, never considered it, but have since considered it since playing the TCG and seeing 14 characters and stuff like that. Mm. Imagine that times, what, a thousand, two, maybe much more than that, thousands, you know, of exposure. There's got to be a ginormous amount of people that would be like, oh, a Final Fantasy TCG? Okay, I would try that. I throw the Astinian promo in, like, (laughs) of all things, like Astinian's from the game. It's not like a crazy... Suppose it's not like the uh, Ishtolas or something that's like crazy value that they're giving away or something. Like it's just a yeah. cool thing right. to kind of yeah. connect even, the two worlds. Even throw like you know I I said you could throw the fourteen the old fourteen starter deck in there. You know it's not like that's got a whole lot of value if you reprint it at this point because you've got a new one coming that people are going to be more excited in. Sure. Um, yeah. That could have been your fifty card throw in versus this you know. <laughs> Um, it's even two less cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also so. think that, you know, even even like, I don't know when that comes out. When, when does the 14 collector station come out? July, I want to yeah, say. Yeah, it's, it's a couple months from now. It's... So you could even do the new set. Like, you could even do the new starter. Right. Yeah, yeah, whatever that is at the time. Right. Right. Sure. But yeah, but I mean, a, a, anything, right? And that was yeah. sort of my point. You know, it, all it takes is, you know, even on your uh, startup launcher, have an ad for the TCG one week um, when everybody's logging into Final Fantasy XIV and you've just exposed your million players of active player base of Final Fantasy XIV to a game that they haven't seen yet that, hey, they might be interested in because look, there's a starter deck with my my waifu on it, you know, <laughs> like it's, it's an easy kind of sell, right? So right. Yeah, it doesn't anyone... really make sense. Yeah, and even people who haven't played like the old games, they might play and be like, "Oh, I enjoy Triple Triad on here. I know this isn't the same game, but hey, let's check out what other kind of card type products they have." And then they'll, you know, have interest that way. Like, there's so much. Yeah, right. I've said it a million right. times. Exactly. I am sad that the the Canada one got nine people, but let's I just move on and look for better things. I think RVA is going to be super exciting. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. I, I do. Feel like saying you know despite all the seeming belly aching on the on the you know u.s page about the event you know i i do think even though there were these tick ups everybody did have a good time and that's really the spirit of the event so yeah know, at least at least that's there right <laughs> yeah yep. always always a nice silver lining to it but yeah as you touched on it, sam that was my second topic but it, Sadly, there's not a whole lot to talk about it. There's the nine we player don't know event. It, yeah. yeah, we don't know deck list or anything. All we know is that the attendance was not double digits, which is disappointing. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. we'll get some more info on that in the future. But And nine is the number where you can go X1 and miss out on top cut. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you can, yeah. Nine and 14 are like the two numbers I noticed. I think that that happens a bit. Mm-hmm. It's oh. kind of like the LQ last year, right, where I had the same right or some one of us had the same record yeah. we got. I don't, yeah. We're not going to belly it too much. I don't think it's a sign of like overall anything. It's just kind of maybe a location no, I issue think what, or something. I think what happened in Miami is right. we had we had nine players for the, the event on Friday night. And then I went X to one and missed top cut. Mm-hmm. And then the next day you went X one and missed top cut. Anyway, uh, appreciate your time, Rick. Uh, also known as Tom yeah, Berry Prince yeah. himself. <laughs> 
Uh, is there anything Rick else? Grimes. Is there anything else you wanted to put out there before we uh, wrap up? Um. Well, you know, I think I covered pretty much the big things. Scoopocon that, and uh, I will be doing a giveaway for that uh, lovely issue of Card Gamer that you did see behind my head. Uh, I'll be giving that away for free on the Facebook page. Um, if anybody goes and shares the original post, <laughs> they'll be entered to win that. Um, and that, you know, obviously has those super rad spoilers that uh, we've read, but not necessarily seen. Um, so you'll get to see those um, if you check out the site uh, tomorrow as well. Yeah, sweet. Oh, that's awesome. Well, appreciate that. And uh, we've appreciated you uh, spending your time with us tonight. I know we had a couple technical hiccups and some other things, but <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Sam is freezing at the end. <laughs> I think we never have these technical issues. What's that? It's funny how we never have these technical no, issues. No, not, not this kind, no. Yeah, now all of a sudden there's like 20 of them in one, yeah. one sitting. But uh, anyway, thanks guys again uh, for tuning in yep. this week. And thank you, thank to you Rick. as always. And thank you, Rick, for joining us. And... I was Zach Burrell. I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And we'll see you next time.